Now let's turn our attention to example number 9. Here we're going to consider the function f of x, which is the sine of x over the cosine of x plus 2. We want to state where this function is continuous. So much like we've seen in the past couple videos, we're going to use the theorems that we've been talking about to help us try to determine this. So a couple things that we can see right off the bat is that sine of x is continuous for all real numbers, or that is, it is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to infinity, right? And we know this again because this is going to be a trig function, and the sign is always defined, right? There's no time where the sign becomes undefined, and so according to the previous theorem, since it's defined everywhere, it's continuous everywhere. Now, in a similar way, we can see that y equals the cosine of x plus 2 is continuous on the same interval of negative infinity to infinity. And that's because, again, I have my cosine function as a continuous trig function defined everywhere. And I have just added to it a polynomial, which is also going to be continuous here everywhere. So when I put these together, I can see that there are going to be um, uh, the top of the function and the bottom of the function are always going to be continuous. Now, the only thing I have to make sure of, again, is that the denominator is never going to be equal to 0. So I'll put in here that I should note that y equals the, or not y equals, but let me just say that the cosine of x plus 2 does not equal 0 for any x, right? I know that that's going to be true because the smallest that the cosine can ever be is negative 1, and the largest it can ever be is positive 1. And so there's no value that's uh, going to be in, uh, that the cosine can spit out that would cause this to be equal to 0. Specifically, we would need the cosine to come out equal to negative 2, and we know that that's not possible. So because the top is always continuous, the bottom is always continuous, and never equal to 0, we can say that f of x is continuous on negative infinity to infinity. It's continuous everywhere. I can plug any number into the top, any number into the bottom, and I never create a problem. OK, so then what about part b? Part b asks me to evaluate this limit and provide an exact answer. Well, we're going to highlight again something that's very, very important that we've seen uh, actually in the last video near the end. And it comes to the, down to the fact that if I have a continuous function, keep in mind what that means. If f of x is continuous on this interval, then this means that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is automatically going to match f of a. These have to produce the same value. So since I'm working with a continuous function, uh, I can write this. Let me go ahead and express it in this way. I can say since f of x, which is equal to sine of x over the cosine of x plus 2, is continuous at x equals pi over 3, that's what I'm approaching, and I know it's continuous there because it's continuous everywhere, then when I go in to calculate this limit, I recognize that really this is going to be exactly the same thing as actually just plugging in the value of pi over 3. I kind of get for free by continuity that direct substitution now is actually going to work for every function as long as it's continuous. Notice again here, highlighting the different parts, here I have the limit as x approaches a of a function, and since my function's continuous, I know it's equal to that f of a. So that's all we're dealing with here, is just saying that these two things are equal. But of course now I can go ahead and simplify this down. I know that the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. I know that the cosine of pi over 3 is a half. 
And so ultimately this is going to be square root of 3 over 2 divided by 5 over 2. This would be 5 halves or 2 and a half. Now if I simplify this up a little bit more, of course I could multiply by the reciprocal and I'm going to end up with simply a square root of 3 over 5 because my 2's here are going to cancel out. So I have the, again, exact value of what this limit is going to be, square root 3 over 5. So as I state down here in the note, we are more or less kind of providing a generalization of the direct substitution property that we talked about in 2.3.1. Now, in that section, we said that direct substitution was only able to be used on polynomials and rational functions. But what we're seeing now is that really, if I have a continuous function, I can actually use direct substitution as well. Since this says that if my function is continuous, these things are always equal. And so my limit is automatically equal to just what happens when I plug in A.